As a content creator, you might be wondering, how can you promote your channel on YouTube for free? In this video, I'm going to talk about this topic based on our personal experience. We run a channel on data visualization AI text analysis called Nodus Labs that has 20,000 subscribers. Not so many, but also not too few. And recently we had a video that got uh, more than half a million views. So we started analyzing the analytics and trying to find some patterns inside. And the approach that I want to propose is very effective. We basically realized that uh, the main traffic source for our videos are the browse features on YouTube. And this is basically the content that's shown on the home page, as you can see here. Most of the views we got was from the home page. So then we started exploring, okay, what do you have to do to actually get to the home page? And if you look at the home page of your potential customers, you will see that YouTube recommends uh, the content that relates to their interests. You have a list of the topics that those people are interested in. And then it finds the videos that are related to those topics. And then of course it uses recommendation algorithms to see uh, what are the people like you are watching when they watch videos that are similar to the ones that you watched and then recommends you the content based on that. So how can we gather all these insights together and understand uh, how to make YouTube recommend your videos on your customers homepage? In fact, the core of this approach is to analyze a homepage of your potential customer first, then you look at your own videos, so the stuff that you actually publish online to, to understand how YouTube sees you, and then you combine those two together using a tool that we developed called uh, Infernodus that allows you to see what are the main topics that are interesting for your potential customers, for your viewers, and how does YouTube see you, and what content you should push in order to make sure that you will be shown at the top of your potential audience's uh, home pages. So this is the strategy that we will use. So keep watching if you want to learn how it works. First of all, let's analyze the homepage of the potential audience that we might have for our channel. In fact, this channel that we use, Nodos Labs here, uh, I'm kind of watching the same videos as the people who like uh, our videos also watch. So our homepage is pretty representative of the interests that our audience might have. Uh, these are interviews with uh, interesting people that work in tech and AI, also some technical content on AI. There are some things about music. The first thing that we can do is to actually simply copy and paste the names of all these videos. And we, ne we need to understand what is this content about. So you can look at the topics here and we see here that, okay, it's music, computer programming, physics, deep house, music style, recently uploaded, watched. Okay, so there it kind of gives us a general info that uh, it's probably something about computer programming, physics, and music. But let's analyze it in more detail. So to do that, we will open in for another apps and then just add this copy text into the text analysis field and generate a graph of the terms that I used in those video descriptions to get a general picture of what the content that is recommended to us on the home page is about. And we can see that a lot of it is about AI. So this is kind of like the central topic, which means that if we want to create content that will be seen by the people uh, who we want to target, we need to speak about AI. Okay, that's clear. And let's use the AI itself that is built into Infernodus to generate the names for the other clusters. The way that it works, by the way, is that it visualizes the main ideas as a graph. Uh, the ideas or the concepts are the nodes, and if they occur together in the same context, they will be next to each other and they will have the same color. And based on that, we can use the AI to interpret the names for those clusters of ideas identified. And we can clearly see uh, a topical structure of any discourse. In this case, it's the videos that are shown on the home page of YouTube. So we see that a lot of them are about artificial intelligence, relaxation techniques, so maybe something about like learning how to relax or how to also look after your health, which is much more specific, by the way, than the uh, topics that YouTube provided. Right, then we have uh, AI again, but kind of like a slightly different content. Then we have video production, because we're making videos, so this is why this topic is interesting. And then again, AI, so basically it's AI, time management and relaxation techniques. Okay, this is great. So it gives us an idea that we need to target AI, 
and maybe some content that relates to health or to uh, productivity. Of course, if we could link AI and music, that would be perfect, but I think uh, we will not go there this time. Let's go for the main topics first. So this is a picture of what our potential audience might like. And by the way, if you have several profiles on YouTube like I do, you can export this data there. You can also ask your friends to just send you uh, the text that they see on their homepage so you better understand uh, what those interests are. You could actually add it all into the same graph and visualize it like this. Another powerful feature of Infranotice is that you can actually select the main word like AI and hide it from the graph to see the context around so you understand a little bit better what are the more uh, nuanced topics there, right? So we have something on OpenAI, for example, Lex, AGI, so it's like a lot of also interviews with interesting people or a lot of YouTubers uh, that, that people like to watch, right? So that can also be an interesting insight into the content that we need to get. Also something about Google, uh, engineer, so maybe something about programming. So we can actually write all these ideas down. We can say that we need to create videos on AI, uh, talk about popular YouTubers, maybe Google engineers, so something a bit more technical and so on, right? So then we save all this. These will be the content ideas for our audience. The next step is to analyze how YouTube sees our channel. The thing is that it will recommend your channel if it thinks that it's relevant to your audience's interests. So for example, if you're making videos about uh, a very esoteric aspect of data science, but your audience is mainly interested in AI, then probably it's not gonna be shown to the public. So this is why you want to see first how Google sees you, how YouTube sees you, and then um, use these insights in order to understand the what kind of content you should create to get to the top of the homepage. So let's go to the channel analytics here. And you have a view here in the advanced panel of analytics of your YouTube channel that shows you all the videos you have sorted by the number of views. So we will first import this data and try to understand the, what is the general picture of our channel according to YouTube. So for that, we go again to the apps and Infranodos upload a file, I upload that exported file that I created from uh, this data here, add it into the new graph. I say that I want to analyze only this column, the video title, don't need any other ones. And I can also, by the way, say that I'm gonna use the video publish time as the timestamp because you will see, we will be able to also observe how, how the content evolved over time. I'm gonna give this name to the graph click visualize and Fernodos will import this data from the spreadsheet, visualize it as a graph, show us the main idea. So this is how YouTube sees our YouTube channel. As you can see, our audience is interested in AI, but how YouTube sees us is much more technical. There's a lot of stuff on text analysis, graph exploration, search engine optimization, and AI development is one of the clusters. So that's a good thing, but it's only one of the clusters. So we can see directly that if they have some sort of algorithm or AI thinking what to recommend next, our content will go to much more technical users, which is great for us. It will also go to the people who are interested in search engine optimization, which is great because Infranodus can also be used for that. And we will also target AI development. But what I can see directly from this graph is that uh, we're not so strong on AI. We're going into two technical details and probably that's why we also get less views. The interesting thing is that the video that we got a lot of views for was uh, called How to Brainstorm Better Than ChatGPT with Knowledge Graphs. This is the one that got 600,080 views, right? So uh, this is kind of like a, an insight that when we make content about AI, it's gonna be viewed by more people. And if you make content about more technical aspects like text network analysis and graph exploration, maybe it will get to the people who are interested in those niche subjects, which is a very important audience for us because this is where we started. So we're never gonna stop creating content for this kind of audience because this is our technical interest. But if we want to promote our content, then probably we should shoot for the more popular topics like AI, which is also trending at the moment. Okay, so 
one way that you can estimate actually the amount of interest uh, that those topics have is to simply go to your channel and type in something like let's say I type in text network analysis this was one of the topics that we had so let's see if I type in text network analysis actually I have a plugin from Uber suggests that shows how many people search for that but you can use any plugin for that matter you see 39 searches per month I can also make a more general query network analysis because this is what I see here text analysis network analysis okay a little bit more 2400 text analysis let's see how many searches we get here 3000 a month not so bad it's kind of interesting but let's say if you look at the filters and you look at the um, view count and you sort the videos by the view count you see that the most views that the video on the subject got was like 400,000 which is not bad but it's not the best um, if on the other side you type in something like chat GPT check how many searches it has per month 20 million which is a great insight because it means that much more people are watching those videos that means many more people have this content recommended on their homepage which means that if you make something about this topic then you're much likely to get on top of the home page of more people uh, and that means that uh, when they watch your video and something else then your video will be recommended to more and more people because this is how the recommendation algorithm works it looks at what else people watch in relation to your video the more people you have giving them this data uh, the more uh, re recommendation they will generate in relation to your video, right? So this is why it's good to target for the popular keywords, but also, of course, you should be aware that there is much higher competition there because a lot more people are creating content for that topic. But you also have much more views. Uh, so it's kind of like a trade-off and you basically need to understand uh, how to approach it better and maybe find some niche topics that connect uh, a popular one to something that is much more nuanced. So this is what we did exactly with this video. Uh, we spoke about ChatGPT, but we also mentioned that it's about knowledge graphs. And knowledge graphs is a much more technical uh, topic. It's searched much less, but you still get a sizable number of views for that and sizable number of searches. You see around 10,000, which is actually more than anything else we've searched so far. And the videos get viewed uh, also a few million times by the way our video is third in this case as you can see so it's not a bad development in this direction but it means that the next hit video if we want to make one it should be about chat GPT AI and something else because we don't want to compete for just chat GPT so we will need to find that very special thing that we will target it to uh, that we will reach the audience interested in AI get on their homepage but also stay loyal to our product and to our idea and to our own interests because we don't want to just create videos uh, you know, that will be uh, only catering to what's most popular. So you always have to kind of make this trade-off with yourself and uh, find the stuff that are interesting but that will get in front of your audience. All right, so once we have this information, another thing that you can do is to actually compare these two graphs. So we have a graph of how YouTube sees us in this case, right? Uh, I think that was here. And then let's compare it to your homepage content. So to do that, you click this button, compare, then you choose how it's different from and how it's different from the homepage. And what happens here is that Infernodus overlays these two graphs. So one is a graph of your popular videos Another one is the graph of a typical homepage content. And then it shows you what is on the homepage that's not on your channel. Okay, so it shows here difference. You're in the diff view. It shows uh, how this graph, uh, text to four and so on, which is the content of the homepage, is different from the YouTube channel content, right? And this shows you what's on the homepage that's not in your videos. And what's interesting is that it doesn't just show you the words that are uh, appearing on the home page that don't appear in your videos. No, that's not what it's about. It shows you what relationships are not appearing then. That's very important because words, we all use the same words, but how we connect them together is what also creates meaning. And uh, if we focus on the relations that people are recommended that 
are not catered to somehow by the content online, then we will make sure that we see interesting results. And here we say we we see that AI is connected to website, startup, open podcast uh, agent, AI agents, and so on. By the way, if you click here and then in the analytics panel, you, you actually see them as, as a list. So you can save all these relations to your notes. And that will give you ideas for the content that you should create to target uh, this audience. So I know that we need to make a video about AI and maybe AI podcasts. So for example, using AI to analyze podcasts of popular YouTubers, that could be one idea. Another one is to talk about AI agents, something we didn't make content about yet. So that could be also a very interesting topic to explore. Actually, I'm gonna save this. AI startups I'm not so interested in. Uh, talk. Okay, we, this we will keep and we will actually explore later what it's about. Uh, and then the rest, let's get rid of it because actually AI website, I also find that's quite interesting because you can use Infernodus to analyze uh, websites or to actually create chatbots for websites. So it's also something we haven't talked about yet. But let's say I'm interested in this idea of AI, um, what was it? That's where the notes are helpful, AI podcast. So I click on AI podcast. And I see that it's connected, both of them are connected to ML, machine learning. And if I click here, I can see in which context it's used. So super data science, ML and AI podcast. So basically my potential audience might be watching podcasts on AI. So perhaps I should just make a podcast and release it every week and just talk about what's happening in AI field in general. That could be a nice idea. I'm gonna write it down. Uh, regular podcast about AI and tech news. This can attract the audience, perhaps. Then let's say also AI talk. What was that about? We click here, we see that, okay, talk AI. So it's just Elon Musk and Rishi Sunak talking about AI. Okay, that's that was a video um, that I had in my recommendations, but it might be not so interesting. So as you can see, I'm kind of iteratively going through all these ideas, find out which have the most potential, kind of like the lowest hanging fruits, uh, the content ideas that would make sense. And then when I go back to my channel visualization, so the visualization of the most of all the videos I have, right? Um, I can see that my content is a little bit too technical. So this is one insight I have for myself is that I'm going to shift a little bit into the AI direction and link it to the tech that we use to make it interesting and uh, and address more people, uh, but at the same time to uh, still talk about the stuff uh, that are really relevant to the product and that are interesting to our audience as well. One next thing that we can do also is to actually look specifically into each particular topic. So for example, here, when we click on AI development and when we zoom in, you can see that there is a lot of stuff, uh, just gonna close that one, there's a lot of stuff on how to generate content using ChatGPT, personal knowledge man management systems. So there's a lot of ideas here. But how did this discourse evolve over time? So this is uh, like when, when we did this import uh, and we specified that one column is going to be the time of the publication of the video, we can also see how YouTube sees uh, our content evolve over time. And this is pretty interesting because if you go here into settings and then you go on node filters, you can actually observe how the content evolved over time. So you choose a time period here and then you slide to see how it evolved over time. And you can see that it became, was more technical first. It was more about text network analysis and visualization at the beginning in the first years of the product, which was from 2018 when we started putting the videos online, right? But then how the content evolved was moving towards analyzing discourse, marketing, search engine optimization, but then it went into AI. So we know that YouTube sees that we're shifting into the AI direction, but there's still too much content about the technical stuff. So perhaps also this is another insight for us to understand that we need to uh, focus more on AI content if we want to reach uh, more eyes and uh, if we want to make our channel more interesting for general audience. Okay, so that would be one other insight that we have. And finally, let's move on and see how we can also analyze the most popular videos that we have on YouTube. So for that, we will go to uh, 
this file here. This is a list that we exported from YouTube. And I'm just going to select um, only the top 30 videos. I'm going to save this as a new uh, CSV file. So I'm going to save it as a CSV. I will just name it like this table data two text CSV format. Okay, I close that and then I import a new file and then choose this one. Click next, choose the video title again. Uh, and these are the most popular videos that were viewed the most times from 2023, so last year. And then I visualize them to see what is the content. Here it's much more about AI, which is good news for us. Also more about ChatGPT, search engine optimization, data visualization. So this already gives us an idea that uh, the more popular content that we have that is viewed by more people is about AI. So this is another confirmation of the hypothesis that we should shift into this direction. I hope you find this information useful. Let me know what you think about it in the comments to this video. Also, please subscribe to our channel so that you can get informed when we put more content online. And I'll be curious about your feedback. Any questions, comments, critique, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to try this out with your own channel, you can do this on infranodos.com. There is a free two-week trial, so you can just use it, see how it works, get some insights, and hopefully it's going to be useful for you. Thank you.